Fula. A CK. Gamo. Juma. All massive names. Each with a hefty price tag. But will the return resemble the spend here in Ruaraka? A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Nyayo National Stadium. It's also called the National Stadium in Nairobi, Kenya. It's a venue for a round 18 uh, Kenyan Premier League match. Former champion Starscore FC taking on Chamalil Sugar FC, who are visiting, having done about 370 kilometers into the city and into very good weather with no precipitation at all uh, and with a maximum temperature of 22 degrees. I would make it very good weather for soccer and very good weather for an outing as well, especially if you could dress up in the colors of your favorite team. And I presume the yellow and black would be for Tusker FC and Chumlet Sugar would be having the brown with a little bit of yellow as well but um, as the away color they might just change that a little bit as well they are in an all green attire the Chumlet Sugar side and then Tusker FC as the home team will keep the yellow and black uh, that comes in different uh, designs as well sometimes with stripes sometimes the bigger patch is just uh, of black and of white as well but it's a game that is, very being, uh, is being very closely monitored by a good number of soccer fans in the country because it's also got a very big bearing on um, where Tusker FC is going in the Kenyan Premier League and whether Chamberlain or not can match the uh, prowess of everybody else in the league. Chamberlain in the 14th position in the Kenyan Premier League table standings, FC, uh, Tusker FC are in the 5th position. So gunning for more points to try and go forward. And uh, with the mid-season transfers having been done, a couple of names that have featured in other teams will feature in uh, the Tusker FC side, as well as the Chamberlain Sugar side. Uh, Eugenio CK, Osbert Mande, Dan Sankago, James Situma, Humphrey Mieno, all formerly of Sofa Parker, although at different times uh, in that side. And then you've got uh, uh, Joshua Oyo, who just moved to Chamberlain Sugar side in Jersey 28, who will be uh, up at the front there. The Evergreen Alois Mangi, together with Mesha Karani, the uh, acquisition that Chamberlain did uh, in uh, the opening of the season, will be in the team as well. So, a mixture of the, the, uh, the old and the new on this side. Just the same as what we've got on the uh, referee's uh, bench as well. There's Beth Boy as the first assistant, Okerio Edo Diabo, who will be mixing up as well, together with... Uh, the uh, veteran uh, Moses Asano for this match. And uh, for the Tusker FC side, looking for winning ways again. The substitutes bench uh, have got Emmanuel Ngama and Abdallah Juma, formerly of AFC Leopards, immediate formerly. Ronald Musana, immediate formerly of KCB. Osumba and Clifford Alwanga came from KCB, but that's a couple of seasons back. Dennis Nzomo was from Madara United, but he's made it to the Tusker FC bench at this. Adira is on the other side. Mohamed Mwachiponi, another new inclusion on the Chamberlain side, is on the bench as well, as is uh, Robert um, Indimoli and uh, Dennis Onkangi and Drani Nelson as well, and Samuel Oluwande. Francis Kimanzi, the coach of the Tusker FC side, touted to have the best credentials for a coach from the Kenyan side, and also touted to have had the best of players, has a big responsibility of crafting a win here today. One of the men uh, you love to watch out for, Mr. Moniki in Jersey 19, is as lethal as his name suggests uh, when it gets to uh, to ball control and defense as well. And his coach is a former international, Mike Morori, scored uh, one goal against Gabor for the country. And that's, uh, you know, catapulted him into international fame. He has had to drop a couple of players as well. And why does it that uh, part of the technical bench also had to suffer <laughs> for him just to be able to do his job? So we'll hope that uh, he will be able to do exactly what is expected of him. The bench comprising of Adira Oluande, Migunde, Omengo, Nelson and Mwachiponi is ready for it. We are into the game now. The Chamberlain Sugar side playing from left to right on your screen. And uh, Tusker on the other side starting an early offensive here. Not letting the Chamberlain Sugar side to settle at all. The ball's out on the right side. Trying to cut in. I think this has already gone off the field of play with Danson Kago, the man who is bringing it from that side. I am in the commentary booth with... Uh, Mr. Gilbert Salebua, former coach of, Tusk, um, of FC Leopards, also former coach of uh, 
the relegated Congo United. A former coach of <laughs> another relegated side from um, the Naivasha side. Uh, technical director of a couple of other teams as well. <laughs> and a man in charge of the national youth talent as well. Gilbert, difficult game that we expect today. We're in the second um, uh, leg of the league. We say it's always the business end of things. And now people start plotting and doing the mathematics proper of how many points they should pick from where and how many they think they will not pick. Well, you're right, Bernard. These are two teams. One is uh, at the bottom of the, t of the log and the other one on the better half of the table. So clearly teams that know each other very well, a lot of tension uh, between the two teams. Tasca want to finish at, at the top. Chemile want to get out of that bottom half. So a game of sorts. Uh, it's going to be a free kick from the right side. Mesha Karani floats it into the area. Uh, the very tall Lloyd Wahome then gets it out of the area. Oh, this is going to be a foul. It's been committed just at the edge of the box by James Situma. Uh, it's going to be a free kick. A little turn uh, that was intended to send the ball on to the right side by Joshua Oyo, who just a couple of months ago played with these same players in this team. There's a lot of movement now because uh, the season is just closed. It's a lot of movement, and yet that man on your screen, Musalia from FC Leopards, back to Tasca, having solidified his uh, position in position one and uh, keeping uh, the likes of uh, Duncan Ocheng on the bench. Well, it's going to be a free kick then, and Martin Musalia is the one keeping goal for. Uh, the FC Le um, for the task for FC side, pardon me. Uh, and, uh, Oyo is the one who executes it, but directly into the hands of uh, the Mr. Musalia. Played for Madara United, then to FC Leopards, now to task for FC. Osborne Monday uh, has got a couple of his former teammates from everywhere in this team, from Madara United, from Sofa Parker. <laughs> He's got everybody on this team. So we're going to see a lot of teams that look new with new tactics as well or you even being given the chance to take the free kick well a lot of teams are rebuilding and that this is a phase where uh, the winner takes it all the loser you might be able to go out of this uh, particular league so uh, both of these teams want to solidify their their position in the league first and then also try to get points to be able at least to move up uh, that uh, log it's back to us monday he's played his professional football even in Tanzania, coming back into the Kenyan Premier League and winning the position in the center of uh, some of the top Premier League sides that include Sofapaka and now Tusker FC. Good ball down on the left side. Nice ball control as well. I think the push was just a little bit too much, but uh, you admire the spirit of uh, running with the ball into that box, causing a little bit of trouble. Smith Oko forced to push it out. I think uh, it was good to see Setuba providing uh, the back up to Noah Fuller, who just came from FC Leopards and was pushing on the left flank. Back into the midfield. Alois Mangi uh, tries to get Joshua Royo. This one will go all the way to the goalkeeper. And uh, who brings it all the way back. They've got some of the, uh, I think old would be the wrong word to use here because if you put the years together of the Chemelal Sugar the defense, you're talking about a lot of experience. That's a, a lot better of, way a to lot of experience. And one person that you might uh, marvel about is that uh, man, uh, number five, Omino. He has actually played for uh, Chemelal for a very long time. And uh, <laughs> when you say we, actually, we you must put the actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's been there for as long as the team has existed. <laughs> well, that's the man we're talking about, pushing away. But then the ball is brought into the area. This will be the easiest one put in by Jesse Were. And Omino himself should have cleared that ball earlier on. He tried to make it go off the field of play. The captain of the task of his side, who's already scored 10 goals for his side, puts in the 11th goal. Jesse Were with the easiest of taps past the goalkeeper. It's uh, Rodi Nyango in uh, that uh, goal for uh, the uh, Chamberlain Sugar side. And uh, that's the mark of a good striker as well. This is where the mistake comes in. Omino, while we were talking about the years of experience, leaves Wafula thinking he's already marshaled him off the ball. Wafula puts his foot onto the ball and brings the ball back into the area. An easy tap for Jesse Were here. We've talked about that, man. Remember being hit four goals uh, by Gorma here. Same problem, central defense is slow. Were with that uh, speed that he has, beats him to the, to, the, to the ball and puts the ball in the net. Clearly, Tasca leading Chemilin. One goal to zero.
Well, fifth minute goal by Jesse Ware it changes the way the game is going to be played. Good ball down on the right side. And uh, quick uh, recovery to intercept it from Tata Zomala. So it's back to the goalkeeper who sends it off the field of play. I think just to stem off a little bit of the tension that was being brought into that. A very dejected goalkeeper. I mean, uh, it's just come back to Chamberlain Sugar. And uh, fifth minute goal from a very easy tap. He obviously would have been blaming uh, the central defenders for not having cleared the ball on time uh, it will be a big job to try and uh, recover from that musalia plays it to asike eugene this is going to be a foul has been monday tackled unfairly by alois mangi uh, he will not a free kick there we haven't settled down we're just playing the fifth minute but um, you know seeing your opportunities early enough is equally a good tact in this is that's it? a way good, that's the best way to start uh, Tasca, i remember kimanzi spoke about uh, playing on a field that was uh, waterlogged in chemili and uh, getting two goals and he complained a lot now he's on a better better surface with very quality players we expect him to play some good football and uh, chemili going down in the fifth minute puts a lot of pressure not only on the coach but on the team to be able at least to get one very very soon and make a comeback well, incidentally jesse were uh, opened the scoring as well uh, in chamalil in uh, the reverse fixture in the first leg and um, it will be interesting to see whether or not he can notch in two goals uh, in this one but he really forced that one when uh, they last played at chamalil on a very muddy pitch as well that forced uh, teams to schedule their match to complain and have their matches scheduled away from uh, the Chamberlain Sugar background but uh, the Chamberlain Sugar side uh, lost four goals to one against Gormaya drew with Muaroni youth drew with Western steamer and drew with Nakuru all-stars the cross coming into the area Jesse Wera is left alone again and uh, onside doesn't handle the ball uh, accurately to goal uh, but again uh, showing exactly why he's one of the predatory strikers stayed in his point totally unchallenged but it's just the angling that is not accurate well that's the reason why chamberlain has considered 20 goals and uh, have a minus eight goal difference that central defense line has not worked for them they have not won a single game in the last five outings that they've played so far and coming into this one one goal uh, down at this particular point really puts a lot of pressure on Moruni and his team uh, again, uh, Chamberlain Sugar will be trying to permeate uh, the right wing, which is where they are attempting most of their runs. And, uh, this is uh, just at the edge of the box. Kevin uh, will pick it up and uh, will be. Was trying to get uh, a better move on the flanks. He gets the ball back and sends a little bit too far with Mesha Karani and uh, Alois, on, uh, uh, Alois Mangi trying to organize it for a shot towards goal. Tasca beginning to dominate this game here. Well, they are dominating the game. Remember, the last time that Tasca beat Chamberlain was in uh, in 2013, uh, beating them away one goal to zero. And apart from that. They lost to Chamberlain in 2014, 1-0, tied to Chamberlain in 2014 in the second leg and tied in the first leg of 2015. So clearly, it shows you that uh, Chamberlain and Tasca have a bond to pick here. They've played out of the seven matches they've played. They've uh, each won two, drawn three, and lost two matches. Uh, again, this one comes into the area, picked up uh, more confidently this time round by the goalkeeper. Never before have goalkeepers wanted to observe the six-second rule like they're doing at the moment. This is a push that is going to be penalized. Lloyd Wahome, marshalling Meshe Karani off the ball. is going to be a shot just at the edge of the box. And, uh, well, that one quite unnecessary by Lloyd Wahome, but just trying to make sure that they keep uh, the tabs on the defenders, yeah? So it's going to be a free kick to the... Tasker FC side, we know how good they are at set pieces, don't we? Well, we talk, um, we already talked about uh, the inclusion of Mesha Karani with three goals to his credit at this particular point. He's a goal torture by excellence, and uh, given those opportunities, especially the runs right behind the central defenders, he can really, really be a pain to this Tasker defense line. 
So they've already organized their wall, uh, and Mesha Karani will be given the responsibility of taking it. Mr. Musalia, Ali Bireji in the goal area. And, uh, Karani tries to get it past the wall. Uh, it uh, takes the deflection that sends it up the field of play. So this is going to be... Uh, uh, it's going to be a free kick. Oh, uh, it's going to be for... It's going to be a corner. And it is for Chamberlain Sugar. A uh, better header sends it out. As uh, the Tuscrafts inside now come out in droves. Kago tries to use his speed, uh, but then finds it difficult against uh, an equally fast tight as Romano. He's off the field of play, it's going to be. It was a throw in quickly taken. Again, uh, it is the Chevrolet Sugar side who are coming in. And Karani then turns. Um, well, turns the defenders inside out, but doesn't create a chance to go for a short term. Well, this one's still in play. Uh, it's been picked up by Murage. The shot is intercepted by James Tuma. Because off the field of play for a corner. Well, you could say they're mounting equally dangerous attacks, aren't they? They are, and uh, Bernard Karani apparently happens to be one of the players who came from uh, the Madare ranks, so he knows this uh, terrain very well, he knows these players very well, and that is why, the reason why he's very comfortable. Well, Joshua Yo floats in the corner, enticingly for a header, but it's not taken. Jesse Were tries to push it forward, and this will be a foul by Jonathan Mwaniki. It is given to Tusker FC. Kevin Kimani quickly starting, starting it. I think Tusker is enjoying playing a very fast game, aren't they? They are. They know that uh, the past few minutes of this game will definitely determine how the game progresses. And uh, their speed, especially moving forward, has been very fantastic. Well, Joshua Yo. <laughs> Getting some very, very serious treatment coming from Jim Situba. And to think they played in the same team just a couple of months ago. Situba is not making that look like the case. He's making it look like he doesn't know him at all. Well, if you just look at the face of Jos uh, Joshua Yo, it tells you that he really has the edge to be able to, to score against his all side. Mesha Karani lifts it for Chevalier. Oof. Flying header. Sending the ball off the area by Joaquin Zatudo, one of the longest serving players in the Task Crafts side. And he knows just how difficult things can be there. Pushes that ball out. Well, it's going to be a corner. Oh, I think we had that, didn't you? I think the referee says, I'm watching both of you. Oh, well, that's very intimidating. Joshua Rio then floats another corner for Chevrolet Sugar. The header it was by Mangi, but doesn't uh, by Karani, but doesn't come back to a very favorite position. This will go for uh, this will be uh, flagged for a foul. It's going to be given to the Tusk FC side. How does it feel when the referee tells you, "I'm watching you"? <laughs> well, he's just given a warning. He's given you a bubble warning. The next time that you do you do the same thing. He will definitely pull out his card. Uh, they head back into the midfield. Uh, then pushed again uh, into a better position for the Chamberlain Sugar side. And now the captain will turn it round. Uh, it's a good ball for Ayo down on the flanks. Uh, and he's used his speed to the maximum. Cuts it back. Enough men are going for it. Musalia gets there first. Mesha Karadi couldn't put one of his long legs onto that ball. <laughs> But again, it comes back to their side. Oyo is out on the right. Oh, Karani ruled offside, but the fans say no way. <laughs> he came from an offside position. Did uh, he? That's, yeah, that's that side the call was made. Oh, but the the that won't stop the fans from saying no way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is Joshua Oyo, but you have to marvel at his speed, don't you? Well, I think uh, it, it's very, very evident that uh, Situma is finding it very, very difficult to match the pace of Joshua Oyo on the left-hand side. Of that attack and that man on your screen Karani he knows Kimazi was once his coach and uh, he knows that he wants to prove something against his former coach at this particular point 
That is well, the trauma. It, it was bound to happen. <laughs> the speed, uh, the pace that the game has adopted was bound to <laughs> claim a couple of casualties. And Situma has stretched himself just a little bit too long. Uh, Joshua Royo could be the reason because he's running him down on that flank and he's done it about three times. Well, he played against him. He knows him very well. He knows that Situma is good tactically in marking. But uh, when it comes to speed, Joshua Royo has more speed than the, the, the older Situma. You've seen it from the left hand side where Temile has been playing their trade. Well, we might just get a chance to see it again here. <laughs> uh, that is the run. It's a massively big run by Joshua Yo. What speed! And he cuts it back into a 45. He just doesn't give it enough power to get it into a further position. But still, that just tells you that danger is lurking on the right hand side for the Tusker. On the right hand side for the Chamberlain Sugar side. They're bringing it onto the right hand side. Well, Omino. He will take the blame for that goal, seriously. He didn't clear it on time. And uh, there was a faster Noah Fuller, faster footed Noah Fuller, who removed the ball from there. Big boot again, uh, trying to get a yo into the area. Eloiro Obedulza, how difficult it would be to mark that man. Quickly removes that. Uh, going to be a throw in. And uh, it's going to be for Chamberlain Sugar. Well, it's no wonder they call this second leg the business end of things. You can see it in the face of the businessmen on the field at the moment. <laughs> Especially Joshua Yo, his face just tells you that he is actually come out here for business. Oh, he's an astute businessman then. <laughs> this one goes off the field of play. It's going to be uh, throwing. It's going to be for Chevrolet Sugar. A little touch by Oyo, and then Karani gives it back to Oyo, gets it to Mangi, who's totally unmarked, lifts it into the air. This one just goes overboard. Just a couple of inches, but the best move so far that we've seen from Chandler, the little touch, and then Mangi in a perfect position, lifts it slightly higher, it goes over the bar. They're as dangerous as uh, they can get. They're they? finding, they're finding their way, especially in that uh, uh, Tasker rear guard that is a little bit slow. If you look at the pace that uh, Chemili is ex exhibiting out here, it shows you clearly that they want to get that ball back. And uh, Tasker just leaving on the edge at this particular point. Very simple instructions from uh, Mururi. Let us load the right-hand side. And that is why a lot of attacks are coming from uh, yours end on the right hand side of the attack. And you call that simple instructions? Those are very simple instructions. <laughs> run, run to the right run, side. Run this guy rugged. That is... <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds like a command uh, in the army. Run them down. It's loaded. <laughs> Back into the midfield, Dana. And, uh, oh, Chamberlain Sugar almost losing the momentum. They get it onto the right side now. Oh, and then a big push. They will be trying to power that right flank. Lloyd Wahome. Actually, looking like he's laboring to get that ball in. And then Joshua Royo comes to provide the cover. Quick interception by James Tuma. Oh, this one will be picked up by the Tuscraft's side for a goal kick. Oh, and it's going to be for uh, Martin Musalia to take. He's done it out on the right side. Where Gina Sike is the one who runs the proceedings. decides to power the ball forward to try and get Noah Fuller running. He's not been able to get the feed since the last time he provided. But that's him again, uh, always working hard. Never mind the fact that it looks like he's scraping his way through. It doesn't matter. It's just about how you can get the ball through, isn't it, Gilbert? Well, and that's the reason why they've actually put him in a central position. They know that uh, Chamele's defense is a little bit slower. And therefore, they needed somebody with a lot of pace. And of course, uh, Wafula playing as a top man, just uh, playing right slightly behind him. All the way back to Musalia, and then uh, starts it with Jamsi Tuma on his left. Oh, trying to get uh, Jesse Were into the box. Uh, quickly picked up by uh, the Chamberlain Sugar side with the captain, Smith Ouko. Playing it out to the left. This is Titus Romalua. Oh, is Mangi now. Well, you've talked about loading the right flank so much that when the ball goes to the left, it looks like it's uh, not uh, conforming to instructions. <laughs> <laughs> well, they really don't have much to uh, really work on on the left hand side. I think uh, the speed that which uh, uh, Oyo is trying to buy straight on the right hand side is what will actually uh, become effective for them if they have to score any goal. Well then, 
The good thing about the marches in the second leg is uh, they will uh, obviously look like cup finals. That's because there's no other leg to get points from. You either win it here or you don't. So they really will not sit back. Joshua Yo again unfairly tackled by James Situma. Second time that Situma has been uh, flagged for a foul on Yo. Uh, this makes you realize that Oyo again is one of those players who will get you very easily yellow carded for infringements because he will leave you there all the time and you'll be tempted to pull him back. So Mesha Karani is uh, the cause of all this commotion in trying to put the wall together and the cause of all this movement by Musalia trying to see exactly where he thinks the ball could permeate through. Lifts it into the area, headed out by Eugenia Sike. And back to Karani, chests it down and decides to find space by himself. Uh, he does, but he doesn't get, get a good shot, does he, Gilbert? Well, the shots uh, are not going where they're supposed to be. Uh, they are trying to take shots from different angles, but again, their position has not been there. Uh, Bernard, the reason why Oyo is putting pressure, I think they have, they are in the know that, uh, 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 sorry, Situma has four yellow cards at this particular point, and uh, they're trying to push pressure on him. If he gets a fifth yellow card, then he misses the next match, and probably the sixth one, he goes out. Well, he's uh, already been cautioned verbally, and uh, two two uh, balls have gone against him. So I guess he's getting a little bit frustrated as well. But that shouldn't be the only way in which the uh, Chumbla Sugar side think they can get the better of him. I think just the speed of Joshua Yo as well is causing concern, and that's why Lloyd Waume has almost moved permanently on that side, pushing Situma a little bit into the midfield, stretching the other central defenders onto his right. Humphrey Mieno tackled hard and from behind and uh, loses possession to Crest, uh, loses, uh, almost loses possession to Crest and Moazo, save for the foul. That makes it uh, a free kick for the Tusker FC side. Back to Situma on the left side. Uh, trying to open up the flank and uh, Kevin Kimani is onside. Tries a left foot cross. Uh, again, Omino not dealing with it effectively. Letting it slide past him. He's got Moniki and Wamalwa with him. But he also needs to be decisive when he's removing those balls from that area. So he's headed back into the midfield. And now probably a chance for the Chamla Sugar side of Gorek has of space to use. The Tusker side concentrating on organizing their defense. Well, this one gets back to Musalia. It was a good spirited effort by Daniel Murage, but he doesn't finish it. Well, that's a, that it has been their main and doing for so far in the 20th minute. I mean, uh, of this particular game, they've been creating those chances. They've tried to break through the, the center, they've tried to break through the right hand side. But what has been lacking is the final touch. Final touch the reason why they've only scored 12 goals in 17 matches. But you're saying they've executed the break in and now they don't want to take the goodies <laughs> in there. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> they're shying, they shying away. <laughs> Okay, but the breaking in would be a crime on its own. <laughs> and then now handling stolen goods. <laughs> but in terms of football, yes, they probably need to finish off. They have uh, brought the ball right to the defenders of the Tusker side. They just haven't been able to execute the shots towards goal. Big battle to try and get position with Misha Karani not winning it. It's out on the right side with Eugenia Sike. Uh, this is uh, Osborne Monday back into the midfield. Kago, very highly touted midfielder and uh, winger as well, Danson Kago. Gets the ball down to Kevin Kimani. At one time, midfielder of the year as well in the Kenyan Premier League. So a lot expected from him. Kago, evading a tackle, a tackle, and letting the ball roll off the field of play. It's going to be a corner. Uh, it's going to be for Tusker FC. What do you make of this diminutive uh, winger cup midfielder? Well, very fast, and uh, his technique is absolutely fantastic. He can take on any defender, and uh, that is a very good acquisition by Tasca in the second leg, something that they've been lacking, especially in the first leg of this uh, game. I know a machine that can do exactly what you said about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> can take on anything, lift anything, pull anything. <laughs> it's called a forklift. <laughs> Well, let's just say that Kago is a very hard worker. The corner by Kevin Kibari headed out for a second corner. Well, Mariki making sure that it's not uh, troubling them any further than necessary. Uh, and Kevin will know that he probably will have to lift it slightly higher. He's got very tall men in that box, including Humphrey Mieno. Lloyd Wahome joins them usually for a header like that one. Uh, this one's floated into the area. Kibari brings it back. Well, it's going to be another corner. 
Lloyd Waome bring it back into play. And then the attempt for a shot towards goal is the one that is deflected out for a corner. So three corners in one move. And all for the Tusker FC side. Well, they've got Frederick Onyango in goal for the uh, Chumley Sugar side. I was getting a little bit jittery in there as well. Uh, now a better floated corner, the interception of which sends it all the way to where Dancing Cargo is in the midfield. Wasn't quick enough to release it, Cargo. And now Dilly Dal is a bit. Oyo dispossessed it in. Speed versus speed and touch versus touch. Oyo tries to get it onto the flanks for Karani, but his left foot defies him. It's picked up by Situmo, sends it off the field of play for a throw in. Oh, that would have been a counter attack and a half, wouldn't it, Gilbert? Well, I mean, uh, that is exactly what Germany are up to at this particular point. Trying to use the speed that they Karani have. Karani picks it up on the right side, but he sends a long one to Murage. Does he have support? Well, he doesn't find it. He's looking around. Ultimately sends it back to Titus Wamalu. Decides to front it into the area. Headed out by Lloyd Wahome. Uh, then uh, the Tusk FC side will try to come out with it. Well, put a ball into the midfield. Alois Mangi picks up position. And good moves by the Chamberlain Sugar side all the way to Murage on the left side. Looking for a chance to cross it in. Murage Dilidal is a little... And he's dispossessed by Joaquin Zatudo, slows him down for a throw in. Oh, good ball control again uh, from Joseph Karioki. Uh, then a big boot into the area. Joshua Yo tries to go for it, doesn't challenge for it. Expects the interception to come from Situma, and it does. Going out for a corner. These are anxious moments for Tusker FC. <laughs> They are finding it very difficult to uh, handle, especially that three midfield, uh, three three man midfield uh, executed there by uh, Chemele. Oyo will float the corner then. A low one, Mangi gets his head to it, almost dangerously. Almino, the defender that he is, is trying to look for space. Uh, ultimately, the shot comes, they're appealing for a handball. Well, you and I know exactly what happened in there. <laughs> In that flurry of things, uh, you could just say that Tasca have survived one. They have survived and they're under Here pressure. It is again. That beautiful corner floated there. Look at that. Omino, the tall one, picks the tumor out, <laughs> picks uh, Piano out at this particular point. Short from the captain. No, there is no handball. Well, <laughs> we know exactly what happened, don't we? <laughs> Uh, we just say that uh, Tasca survived one. Uh, the shot coming in, it was deflected, of course, from the foot. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the naked eye sometimes can't see that first. This is going to be a free kick. <laughs> uh, well, a little bit of a tragedy here. Ovino's trying to block off that ball. And uh, he goes in very menacingly. He doesn't mean it. But unfortunately, he's the one who gets hurt here. Look at Omino's right foot. And then Kago stomps onto his left foot. Well, both of them and, uh, I think Kago, Kago gets himself <laughs> in trouble because it really came after. And that's the right decision, Gilbert. That's a, it's the right decision. I mean, he wasn't going for the ball. His foot was up and high. And uh, clearly, a very good call from the central referee. Well, lovely action coming to you live on your World of Champions from the... Nyayo National Stadium in Nairobi, Kenya. Round 18 of the Tusker Kenyan Premier League. And uh, Tusker FC, part in the fifth position of the Kenyan Premier League table, is taking on uh, Shumlet Sugar FC. Oh, well. Jesse Wera might be a little striker, but uh, every strong man has his weak points at absorbing that, uh, the impact of that shot in the abdomen made him a little bit uncomfortable truth is it knocks a little bit of wind off you and uh, you know you need uh, enough oxygen in your body even to be able to run and so puts him in a little bit of a difficult situation so it's floated back into the area Eugene Asike heads it out uh, Nora Fuller finds himself totally unmarked and in a very enviable position with the ball decides to change the wing successfully to Kago on the right side Kevin Kimani plays it back to Osborne Monday well, they're weighing the options. They've got four men at the front and spread out on the wings. And that is why they are so easily able to identify who is free. In this instance, it is Noah Fuller. 
who is tackled by Joshua Yo. And still manages to get the ball down to Osborne Mandate. That will be a foul. And that is former Tusker FC player Joshua Royo tackling hard on his former teammates. He gets a yellow card for it. It's got to come down, says the referee. And it's the right decision for the referee, isn't it? Well, uh, it's very, very clear that uh, Tusker are finding it very, very difficult at least to penetrate uh, this uh, general defense line. Because they have one thing if the ball goes, then the man must always uh, stay behind. <laughs> <laughs> Kill that. <laughs> That's one of the oldest sayings in football. It doesn't apply anymore, does it? <laughs> you know, I remember a good number of grandfathers by now who were saying, if you miss the ball, don't miss the leg. Gilbert, don't be caught saying that. Here is a chance for a header for Tosk FC players going forward. None of them making contact. And, uh, <laughs> The goalkeeper just lets it roll off the field of play for a goal kick. Uh, this is a good one that is intended for Joshua Yo. Just a bit too long. He needs the help of Mesha Karani in that middle of the attack, doesn't he? And he's not getting that, is he? Well, he needs. I mean, uh, Oyo is doing very, a very good, uh, very, very good work on the right hand side with his speed, uh, bringing in uh, the crosses that Karani needs. And uh, I think the man who needs to work even more harder is the man playing right behind Karani, and that should be Alois Bank. Well, Mangi and Karani have played together for a little while as well, haven't they? They should know each other very well in the way they play their game. Martin Musalia displaying a little bit of his other skills, apart from goalkeeping, bringing the ball into the midfield. Jesse Were has not been in action for a little long. This is picked up by uh, the defence on uh, the Chamberlain Sugar side who sent it forward. Mangi doesn't get to it. A two And then headed out by Omino. Kevin Kimani plays it to Osman Mundy. Uh, looking to open up the flanks a bit. They've got better space in the midfield, in my opinion, Gilbert. Well, they have a lot of space. Uh, now, what, what is happening is that uh, Chemilil have three players in that midfield against Tasker's two. And that's the reason why Tasker is trying to bypass that midfield by playing long balls with Jesse Were, long balls that have not been working. And I think at this particular point, probably Kimans will want to reject that midfield because that is where their problem is. Well, another ball intended for Joshua Oyo's uh, going in front of Situma, looking for a little chance to cut the ball back. Get support uh, from behind. When he keeps it into the area, it's in the corner. It's Murage. And the floating coming from the right side in one of the better build-ups by Channel Sugar. Oh, well, they get a big row of applause here on the stadium. Just on how they've done that one. I think they've already practiced a little bit of celebration here. Oh, here it is. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you can pick up a little bit of dancing skills from that, can't you? My goodness, not with my weight. Oh, come on, it's nothing to do with weight there. It's just the hands moving in a little bit of direction. Muragi has provided it for the Chamberlain Sugar side. Here it is again. All the speed work done by Oyo, who doesn't push the ball from that right flank, lobs it back here, and then uh, Moniki brings it into the area. Murage comes ahead of Atudo, who has realized that Murage is alone. By the time he's arriving there, it's a shade too late, and Murage has got it in the net. With the timing, the timing of pass, and uh, the perfection at which the Murage headed that ball, clearly, Chemili on the ascendancy. Well, lovely, lovely goal from the Nyaya National Stadium. It's Tusker FC 1 and Chamblet Sugar 1. So we've got a game in our hands again as uh, the scoreline changes. It just means that uh, new skills will be called into Gilbert. But for the Chamblet Sugar side, it's sheer hard work, isn't it? It has been coming. It has been coming. We talked about uh, the presence of uh, Oyo on the right hand side, uh, Guinness Zituma, who has been a little bit slower. And uh, we saw it coming, that free, that uh, cross by Moniki, precision pass, and just the running and the timing of Murage, absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, Fuller, I think by now he will realize that he can't play in that midfield. He's got to open up as a winger, and it works best when he's got the pace. Otherwise, closing himself down in that midfield makes it impossible for Fuller to play. Well, they're putting him in a, in a prime position in striking role. He is not a natural striker. He is a guy who can be able to use his pace on the right-hand side. But how do you play him alongside uh, Danson Kago? Well, he's a winger and he's on the left side, Gilbert. Murage again picks up a good ball on the left side. He's got Eugene Asike to deal with. Cuts it back, trying to find out who else was there. And uh, the clearance is done by Musalia, ultimately with Osborne Monday. 
The pressure piling up on Tusker FC, almost forcing them into a mistake here. Kago plays it back to Joaquin Zatudo. Uh, my opinion is that Noah Fuller is good when he opens up wide on the flanks. It doesn't matter whether it's the right one or the left. It's still the same flank. All he needs to do when he's on the left side is bring the ball to his right foot and, and cross it on the right foot, Gilbert. Which means he doesn't have a left foot, Bernard. <laughs> so, uh, well, I've, seen, but, uh, him, I've seen him with two feet, Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> good ball through for uh, Moshe Karani. Turns the defender in. Sets it up for a shot from Barage. It's not on target. I think it's uh, a goal kick. And Osborne Monday is the one who salvages that situation. Karani looked like he was going to strike to finish it. That shot uh, is not a good one. Uh, he goes off the field of play. Rag has already scored one goal for uh, the Treble Sugar side that has brought them back into this game. And, uh, well, you could say Muragi has got both feet, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> now that we're fuller, you say he doesn't have one of them. <laughs> I know a boy who once uh, had uh, one right foot. Well, because the other one was left. <laughs> <laughs> and so he could use both. Here's Muragi again, at the moment becoming a darling of the crowd here. Yeah? Looking for a chance to cross the ball, tries to get it to Alois Mangi. And uh, picked up by Oyo, deciding to take on Joaquin Zatudo, his former defender, and then cut out by... Uh, Eugenio Sike, who tries to psych up the Tusker defense. But they don't look good under pressure, do they? Well, Tusker are actually... Uh... Oh, the ball floated back in from uh, a bicycle kick by Alois Mangi, unexpectedly bringing it to the face of Gola and just not finding somebody to turn it in. Humphrey Mieno plays it to Jesse Werder. Oh, Jesse doesn't get a permanent foot onto that ball. But Kago somehow gets it again from the interception. I think he's handled the ball. Right uh, in front of the assistant referee. There's going to be a throw in. This is the one they didn't anticipate at all. There was just no green shot there to turn it in. You're and right. no black and yellow uh, uniform to clear it. You're right. Uh, uh, is actually doing a lot of disservice for Tasca, on the, on the, especially in that defense. Well, here is another chance then. Uh, Brock to Murage, who tries to set it up for Karaoke. Who dummies, but for who? <laughs> These chances will not come uh, uh, more than they have at the moment. Uh, I would rather a team scores first and then begins to enjoy themselves. I'm afraid that the Chamberlain Sugar side might start enjoying themselves first before they even are uh, scoring the goals. And that would be a problem. So it's going to be a yellow card here. Yeah? Uh, Jesse Weather getting himself unnecessarily in trouble. Uh, he says uh, he tried to do something else. The referee says, no, you did something totally different. And... Uh, he really is protesting that decision. Humphrey Mieno joins him there. As the captain on the side is allowed to talk to the referee. But uh, this is what happened. Pushes the ball there. Uh, then I think as he was coming back, look at his uh, foot there. Uh, that is what becomes a little bit of a problem. Kevin Kimani pushes it back into the midfield. No one for the Tusker side. Easily picked up by Titus Wamalwa. The clearance is big, getting Joshua Oyoye out of the way. Seems to be what Joaquin Zatudo now is bent on doing. Dancing Cargo gets onto it, heads it down to Jesse Were. But Jesse's timing has been uh, very properly read by the Chamberlain Sugar defenders, and they're really getting the ball off his feet on the second touch. Or rather, before his second touch, Situma races for this one, keeps it in play. Wafula with a big sprint versus a goalkeeper who just dummies that he's going to go for the ball. Uh, the ball goes off the field of play, but uh, Mr. Frederick Odiango is complaining that he's been left alone and he had to be the last man there. <laughs> well, uh, Bernard, it's very, very evident that uh, Wafula on the left hand side of, uh, of that. Uh, striking force does not have the tendencies of coming back on the right hand side cargo does not have the tendency of coming back and therefore coming back to what Gilbert? coming back to defense uh, sorry Bernard and that is why they are having a lot of problems especially in that midfield where Miano and uh, and, and uh, Kevin and Kibani and, and Osman Monday yes they're having very big problems because 
Terry Lill have up and up their numbers in that midfield, and that is why they are playing Tasca, especially when they have possession of the ball. Uh, Maragi again will pick it up from that head up by Lloyd Wahome. And to Mesha Karani now. Oh, Karani trying to get a return ball, manages to get it. But then again, it's headed out very easily. Can he go through Situma? Well, he doesn't. Well, they've got to learn how to play the ball to each other in that area. That individual skill is only good, but when you're out backed, the only thing you can get is a deflection, isn't it? You're right, Bernard. And you can see what is happening. Uh, Tasca, they get the ball, the pass touch. It's not good. The second pass again goes way wide. Uh, a little bit of uh, miscommunication between Jesse Were and Noah Fuller. Jesse Were, obviously, knowing that he's going to be in the offside, wanted Wafula to send the ball onto the right side. But Wafula's motions have or had already gone to sending the ball onto the left side for Were. That's Wafula again. Intercepted. Jesse Were. Better idea to send it into the midfield. Uh, a good ball down to Cargo from uh, Humphrey Miano. The cross comes in. Oh, it is dealt with very effectively by Kristen Muazo. Oh, no, you. Oh. <laughs> I think it's just too fast for everybody else. <laughs> I tell you, sometimes in your mind, you know exactly how the moves are supposed to be going. What's Humphrey Miano complaining about, Gilbert? Well, it's it's very, very evident that uh, the Mururi's plan is working. From the onset, he said that deny where is space. And, and this is what I'm asking about. What, what's, what's, he he's handled the ball. About, but he's complaining about that. He totally. handled the ball. He handled the ball with his right hand. Well, he says uh, it was on the shoulder, but uh, there's that part between the shoulder and the biceps in there. I think uh, for bad-mouthing the referee, he gets himself a yellow card. Why is this game having those very, um, you know, temperamental tendencies? Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, Jamie Lil have taken over this game and, the, and uh, Tasca did not expect this. They have been outplayed, especially in the last 30 minutes of this game. And that is why their key players, who have not been given time and space to be able to control and pass the ball, are having it very, very rough against the Jamie Lil side that is very, very solid. Well, Jesse Vera will challenge for this one and picks it up, sets it up for Humphrey Miano, who gets it back onto the left side. Noah Fuller, uh, he's got his right foot for sure, changes the wing, or tries to change the wing with a very big shot onto the left side, onto the right side of the attack. Uh, this one comes into the midfield. Alois Mangi should have been having a touch on the ball. It works better when you have the touch on the ball. Big Boot trying to get uh, Murage running on the flanks. Oyo does a better job on that side for Chamberlain running, doesn't he? <laughs> well, I mean, Situm is having big problems. If it's not Oyo, it's that man on your screen, Murage, who's running rings around him. And uh, he has to be protected. Wahome has to protect him on the left hand side. But that is where their problems uh, are really stemming from. Well, then, back into the midfield, Kevin Kimani trying to control it. And uh, this will be shielded off by uh, Mr. Romino for a goal kick. It will be for the Chamberlain Sugar side. Well, Bernard, these two teams are of equal status. In the last seven matches, they've both won twice, they've drawn three times, and they've lost two times. So it shows you clearly that they are of equal strength looking at the, how the game has progressed in the last 43 minutes. And Firmino picks it up in the midfield. They really have got midfielders who've played for the national team. They are international caliber midfielders, gone for professional stints as well. They should have been doing much better in that midfield, the Tusk FC side. But at the moment, I think they've added one person into that midfield now. Because you wonder where Humphrey Mieno has been uh, in that midfield. It's been Monday as well. Kevin now tries to curve it onto the right flank. Too long. It's off the field of play. It's going to be a goal kick. And it's going to be for uh, the uh, Chumlet Sugar side. So we're playing the last minute of uh, the first half. Um, just before the added time, which in my opinion would be about a minute because we didn't have much of Sopet. Gilbert, how can you summarize this first half? Well, I think uh, Cherry Lil have dominated uh, this first half. Uh, we may call it uh, uh, a game of two halves. At this particular point, Cherry Lil have had the ascendancy. They have had the chances. They've not been able to utilize all their chances. Uh, Tasca have been railing behind. They have not been the Tasca that we've known. They are not playing the kind of brand of football that we know. And uh, probably we just have to wait in the second half and see whether they're going to be changes. 
Oh, they've given as much as they've gotten, if not given slightly more, the Chamberlain Sugar side. But they haven't taken the chances uh, in front of goal when they had them, about four of them uh, that just needed a turn into the net. But we'll see whether or not they'll have all those chances in the second half. The one thing is for sure, when if Tasca get a single chance, it will be a different game. All together, and that's what happens right now. Just a single chance coming in from Lloyd Wahome, totally unmarked. Glances down a header, past everybody else into the net. Well, oh, talk about just seeing things and, you know, knowing that everybody else is waiting for that um, final whistle for the half. Kevin Kibani floats a beautiful ball. It's a glancing header, totally unmarked. Uh, um, and, and right in front of Smith Ouko, who arrives a little bit too late. And Lloyd Wahome has done this before for his team, hasn't he? This is the third time that uh, Lloyd Wahome is putting uh, his head onto that ball. His third goal of the, of the season at this particular point. Salvaging this one for Tasca. Well, again, but Chevlin Sugar not taking advantage of the chances, and we were talking about that just now, what they should do. But from the Nyan National Stadium, Tasker FC 2 and Chevlin Sugar 1. Almost at the stroke of half time, Wahome gives the advantage to the Tasker FC side. Karani recovering his footing to get a corner out of this one. Uh, it's going to be taken by Mesha Karani again from the right side. You almost wish that uh, you almost wish that Mesha Karani with his height would go in there to try and turn it in. <laughs> but I guess every team has its own strategies. Braga has a touch on that ball. Well, Fuller tries to part it forward. It goes out for a goal kick. That's the whistle at half time. Uh, Braga absorbing the whole impact of it. Oh, you have done, has done well on the right flank, trying to bring the balls back. Jesse Wede with the first goal for the uh, Toscraft's side. It is the captain of his side. Gets himself also yellow carded. But uh, at the moment of the Nyaya National Stadium, a tough game that we are watching, courtesy of uh, your World of Champions Super Sport. It's half time. Toscraft C2 and Chumlin Sugar 1.
All right, so there we have it. It is 2-1. This uh, score line reminds me quite a bit about 2011. I think it was mid-October, if I'm not wrong. Hillary Echessa uh, and Humphrey Okoti, the guys who cancelled out that Vincent uh, goal. You remember that game, and it is the score line that finds us at halftime between Chemilil and Tusker. Tusker, the home team, looking stronger in the first half. Uh, first part of the first half, actually, Musa. And then dying off towards the middle of that one, but then coming to life towards the end. No, definitely less because if you look at Tasca, the way their game plan, they are trying to knock the ball from there to build it around. But again, the only challenge Tuskers which are getting, as soon as the Chamberlain are trying to put pressure on them, they are trying to be like to lose head because that's why you are seeing the the tackles are coming in because they want to get the ball in a comfort zone. They don't want anybody to put them under pressure. All right, so why don't we jump into the uh, talking points of this particular one. First and foremost, that goal from Jesse Were. It's the third in two meetings. There we go. Jesse Were, uh, the counter-attack. Uh, we, we have to talk about the possession here. Chemilil looping the ball desperately and hopefully towards uh, their striker, Meshe Karani, and that's where they lose it. But it is the execution of Tusker and Noah Fuller's importance in this one? No, definitely. Let's remember what you talked about to Wafula is not a skillful player, but again, there is a reason why Wafula is. You can see with Tusker, they're playing a 4-4-2 system. They'll try to build it. They'll try to be patient. You can see the ball goes to to Sistuma on the left-hand side. And then the movement of Kevin Kimani it created a space for, for Wafula to come in. But again, you know, that is a top striker who's there in the box. You cannot let, let him alone to just to, you're not marking him. Ball comes to him and then he just put the ball on the back of the net. All right, so that was the one uh, that we were talking about, the opening goal. Three more, two more were to come because it was at three, and it'll be very interesting. Musa, looking at Noah Fuller, what did you make of his performance? At the moment, you can see with the way he came there, he had a game plan, but again, he just after the goal, he made, he made they created a goal for, for Tasca, he was dead again. He's nowhere to be seen. He doesn't seem like he's, like he's floating around. So we, we need to, to see somebody else. We need to see Wafula because at the moment they're not even giving your ball. He's not even showing up. At least for him, you can see that he is a no man's land. Oh yeah, all right, so why don't we look at o Oyo now. This is the place we were talking with you, Musa, as we watched the first half, where the goal was likely to come from. Oyo, the biggest threat. No, for sure, because you can see the kind of system which they played. You know, remember what we talked about. There was a system and there was a problem. Because you can see for them, they knew that they are having a strong point with Zoyo. Oyo is trying to terrorize Wafula, the Situma on the, le the left-hand side. Wafula doesn't have any cover. You can see that is a place where they've seen that there is a weakness on the Tuskers' defense. Oyo is coming there and that is where they got the goal. You know, remember when you talked about him getting the opportunity. On the left-hand side of Tusker, that is where the problem is. All right, and we were going to see the goal come from an Oyo threat because time and again, as you'll see from these two clips here, instances, by the way, a couple of them, but they were there throughout the first half. Uh, Joshua Oyo, the man who was causing problems for his former side, was also at the heart of that Murage goal. No, for sure, because that is that is was their game, uh, the game plan because you look at the right-hand side, that is where the problem is. And they were trying to knock that door, knocking, 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 until the time where they get that opportunity of Oyo. Because even Coach Kimani could have realized that you know what, Situma doesn't get any, any, any support on the other side. You can see that the ball comes from the right-hand side and then the rest is history now. But again, on the left-hand side is a big problem for Tasca. Left-hand side was a big problem for Tasca. We've seen them move Joshua uh, Oyo to the left of Chemelo's attack, uh, where he's causing a bit of trouble for Atudo also, considering Situma uh, had his day at the office, fair share. But there we go, Joshua Oyo helping to set up Muragi, who finds the back of the net, and it's 1-1. Barely do we see goalless draws when these two teams meet, and they didn't disappoint. In fact, they made it the third goal in 45 minutes, uh, and we'll get to that one in just a second. But how about this for Tasca? There was a sense of lack of discipline once they conceded to Chemilil that first, that second goal. No, but again, if you look at Tasca, Tasca is a team which is having a lot of skillful players. But uh, the only challenge comes to Tasca once they concede a goal is like the tactical discipline of defending. Now it always disappears because they don't want players or they don't want the team which will come and put pressure on them. And that is what you can see has happened because on the first 20 minutes, Chemilil came. They were like. You know, giving respect to Tasca. The moment they start putting that high pressure, and that's where they caught Tasca on, on, on break. All right, so there we go. Now there's a sense of, you know, Tasca pushing forward. They were desperately looking for that equalizer, and that's why they set themselves up for these kind of instances. And uh, you see, Again, another easy counter-attack, wasteful from Chell Miller, that must be pointed out. No, we always talk about they had a game plan and their game plans for them, it was a matter of a counter. Because on the last end, that on the last third, that is where the problem comes into Chell Miller. But again, execution, 
they just need to be calm because they can see they're winning the ball. After winning the ball, they intend to come inside instead of going wide. That's where the spaces are. All right, so uh, I like what you just pointed out, wastefulness, and you tend to rue your opportunities. They had plenty of them in the final third, but they didn't execute, and they were to rue that one through Lloyd Wahome. He, of course, punishing them towards the dying ambers of the first half, and it came from a Kevin Kimani cross. This is pretty much what uh, the Harambe Stars technical bench wanted of Kevin Kimani in the game against Ethiopia. You, you see, like Kevin, that's why I think uh, he was calling the national team at least to deliver those kind of uh, set pieces. He's a specialist, but again, it is working for him for his club. We just tend to see at least when a player comes in, those are the things which we have been working on the, the national team. But again, special players come in special occasion and that is what you are being paid off. All right, so Kevin Kimani doing and delivering for the club, and hopefully he can extend that to the national team. However, uh, we just want to take a look at the numbers right now and see how they fare in comparison to the scoreline. The most important pair of numbers has to be Tusker 2, Chevalier 1, but the rest tell a story. No, for sure, because it is, like I told you earlier, in a sense of whatever was going to happen here, Tasker were going for the kill. They didn't know who was going to come to play with them. Again, with Chamelil, they know that Tasker is going to come and knock the ball around. But again, for them, it is to come and get them in counter, which is they're trying to work it on it. But again, if you look at the ball possession again, it's not so bad, but again, it's a matter of they're trying, Tasker trying to knock it patient, but there's sometimes they're going as quickly as possible. But with Chamelil, the last 30 minutes, they've been playing very well. They're playing according to their strength. They play according to the way they train in training. But again, they just lose concentration in the last five minutes. I'm looking at the yellow cards there, two of which came in a space of six minutes for uh, Jesse Wary, the captain, and Humphrey Mieno, Musa, another example of how they lost their cool, how they lost their discipline there. No, because these are players who will want to get the ball in a comfortable zone. They don't want anybody to come and put pressure because as soon as the chairman realized that, you know what, we respect these guys off the pitch, but in the pitch, we need to go tight on them. And the moment they started going tight on them, these are players who don't want to be tackled around. So the moment they're being tackled, they're losing head. And for them, they're professional guys. They are players, players who play in the national team. They need to cool down because they don't want to be challenged from the back. All right, so there we go. Uh, the scoreline at this particular moment is two goals to one. We've talked about, uh, you know, the build-up to this one, our expectations. We've seen the problems there in those highlights, Musa. What are the solutions? I think one of the things, if you look at uh, task on side, you know, they had a very good formation in a sense of a 4-4-2. You know, they had a problem. The only problem which comes to task is a matter of, on Sutuma's side, Kevin Kimani needs to come and support him because you can see he lacks space. Wahome needs to come and cover him because there's no, there's no combination between the two centre-backs of covering. Again, on when it comes to the upfront for Tasca, Wafula is not working. In a sense, they need to get somebody who, again who can come and, you know. Well, look. we have the double subs right there, the bench of Tasca and Chamberlain. What would you change? No Wafula looking sensational in the first seven minutes of the game and then just seemed to disappear. What happens for you? No, for sure, because if you look at Abdallah Juma, I think on the left hand side, I was a left back. I think he needs to come and try and help Situma again. When he goes up from there again, you, you, you find that uh, there is a Luanga, Os uh, Osumba, Osumba who's going to come and help. Uh, Wafula, Wafula has played his past for the first five minutes, but again on the other side of uh, Chemelin, they're trying to do well in just a matter of the high pressure which they're doing. They don't, they don't need to change anything because they just need to concentrate a bit more because you can see they're playing away. It's a team which has tried to knock the ball around, but again with the transition now, what next after they get the ball? What are they supposed to be doing? And not to mention, they like, uh, for Tusker have the likes of Ngama on there. Uh, could we see Mwachiponi coming in? So many questions for Mike Mururi when it comes to this game, especially in the final third. They are doing their fair share in build-up, in that midfield, not giving Tusker the usual chance to dominate. But when it comes to the final third, those are the, that is the area that is begging a lot of questions for Chemilil. As for Tusker, Musa has, you know, pretty much broken it down. Musa, anything else you'd like to add on this? No, for sure, because it's just a matter of Tusker, they need to build the ball from them, to be patient, because when they started, they, they were patient. They opened the field wide. But on the other side of Chemilil, they're trying to come inside the field on the on the center park, which is a bit tight for them, because whatever you're having a counter or a transition, they're having players who are on the wide. Oyo has been doing very well. They've been trying to knock the ball to, to a low. Let them try and get something again from here, because that is a danger player. We, they don't need to deny him the they need to use him because he has been terrorizing the guy on the right hand side or even a two on the other side. Give him the ball, let him take him on because it's a matter of enjoying. And you see, the moment a saw Oyo is coming, he knew that there is a problem. <laughs>
All right, so there, is the, there we go. Thoughts of assistant head coach of Harambe Stars, the man who's also part of the panel for Simba Super Soccer, a show you can catch on Thursday. This game building up to be one of those talking point kind of games when it comes to playback. That's tomorrow night. You can't miss that one. Right now, though, second half is coming up. And let's not forget that Green Army is already starting to trickle into the stadium. We have a second game coming live on your World of Champions. This one is Madhari United recently coming into some money through Britain up against the champions who, well, just can't remember what it feels like to lose. But first and foremost, we have to settle it between Tusker, who lead that game 2-1 versus Chemilel. It's the second half of uh, the Tusker FC versus Chamberlain match, round 18 of the Tusker Kenyan Premier League, and being played at the Nyayo National Stadium. Very exciting first half that we had. We've seen three goals in that first half, with uh, Tusker FC scoring in the fifth minute, uh, and then uh, the uh, Chamberlain Sugar leveling in the 33rd minute. But Lloyd Wahome's header in the 45th minute gives the game uh, to an advantage to the Tusker FC side. So, what will the second half bring then? Well, no changes made to the playing unit. And a good run on the right side of Yo. He was uh, looking like he was in a prime position to control the ball and have only the goalkeeper to beat. But it evades him. And uh, I think just also being a little bit anxious. I'm not sure what he wanted to do with that ball. He lets it go off his foot. Jesse Were tries to turn in the defender. It goes up the field of play. It's going to be a corner. And uh, it's going to be for the Task FC side. So again, our second half that has started on a very, very fast pace, Gilbert. What's your expectation? Do you think this pace will be maintained to the end? Well, I'm sure that uh, the same pace and temperature that, that, were, that were in the first half will definitely be maintained. Especially for Chemine, they will be trying to get at least that equalizer. For Tasca, they will try to get at least that third goal to be able to at least consolidate their lead and uh, relax in this particular game. So far, they've not relaxed. They have been under pressure and the pressure is going to go on. Well, Kevin Kimani will bring in the corner for uh, the Tusker FC side. Oh, nicely cut! A right foot in swinger. And Humphrey Miano gets to it, but then doesn't glance it downwards. A high one that evades even the goalkeeper. Oh, Humphrey as well. Uh, I think the pace of that ball is just what uh, 
makes it almost impossible to calculate how to hit it. Uh, and it goes out. Oyo tries to get the ball past to Karani. Uh, goes off the field of play. It's going to be a throw it now. And Oyo still has it. Karani. And then Osborne Monday robs them of it. It's another attempt to go through the right flank. And it's Noah Fuller. The Pisa is the one that killed it all. The goalkeeper doesn't touch it. Jesse Wele has a second easy touch in this game. And again, three minutes into the half. And Jesse Wele makes it 3-0. In the 48th minute, you would say. He scored in the fifth minute of the first half, just about three minutes in the second half. Jesse Wele again has a touch on it. Uh, this time round, the goalkeeper doesn't get his hand to it. The defenders expect him to go for it. But Jesse Wele, the captain of the Tusk FC side, will be celebrating it. You have to credit Noah Fuller for that big run on that right flank, Gilbert. That was a big run and a uh, pure uh, finish by, uh, flurry finish by Jesse Wele. A brace against Jamil in the first leg, a brace against Jamil in the second leg. Well, here you will blame the goalkeeper, or you will credit Jesse Wele, but definitely credit to Noah Fula. Runs the defense ragged on the right side, cuts back at 45. Goalkeeper looked like he was going for it. Uh, then uh, the blame game, of course, will begin between James Omino and his other central defender on who should have cleared that ball. First instinct, clear the ball. <laughs> From the Nyaya National Stadium, Tusker FC 3, Chamberlain Sugar 1. Uh, Chamberlain will rule the chances they got in the first half as well. But the defenders should have just cleared that ball. They get a corner. It's been taken very quickly. All right, a cross comes in, headed out by Situma. Moragi tries to go for it. Tries to cut it back. It goes into the hands of Musalia. In any case, the ball already being adjudged to have already got off the field of play. This is even before, Gil, but we've talked about what the expectation is in this second half. <laughs> well, Bernard, if there is an area that Chamberlain uh, ha are having... Uh, sleepless nights, uh, the goalkeeping department and that central defense line. They brought in Wanzo Christian to try and uh, solidify that central defense, but it's not working. Well, again, Noah Fuller out of sheer hard work gets the ball back into place. Kago plots it into the area. Osborne um, uh, Monday brings it down. Kevin Kimani on oh, Tusker definitely enjoying themselves. Kago, or rather, <laughs> he's in the offside position, says the assistant referee. But Tosca just pushing and pushing hard. And uh, if Kago wasn't just standing there, I uh, was moving a bit, we would have been uh, in a better position to try and pump in the goal. I think the talk at halftime must have been uh, push them hard and go for another early goal. Well, I'm having problems. So, Wamalwa, Titus Wamala, uh, a, a catch from FC Lepers, rarely played at Lepers, and I think he is struggling with match fitness. This should be about the second match that he's playing, and uh, he's really looked very bad, especially uh, when Tasca have the ball on the right-hand side. Uh, maybe so that's something they need to change, uh, and just to be able to get him to play better. I thought he was holding his own as well. This is a foul. It's going to be for uh, the uh, Chevrolet Sugar side on Mesha Karani. Uh, didn't want to be shrugged off the ball, but Mieno, who looks like he's the stockier of the two, uh, shields him off and also bumps into him. Uh, a good number of players are doing that now. He's landing on the other player just to cushion themselves from a fall. And of course, it is to weaken the opponent a bit. Mesha Karani has already gotten up and uh, he's the one who's going to be taking the free kick for uh, Chevrolet Sugar. And comes it towards goal, an easy catch for Musalia. Who sends it on to the left side, trying to get Cargo onto that ball. It's been picked up by the Chubbly Sugar side. And uh, Smith Oko brings in a left foot cross this time round. Uh, Joaquin Zatudo just makes sure that uh, Joshua Oyo doesn't get onto that ball. Because off the field of play for. Uh, a goal kick is going to be for uh, the Chamberlain Sugar side. There's a big one uh, into the midfield. Humphrey Mieno and then Jesse Wera to a fuller who angles himself for a shot. He doesn't take cognizance of the fact that the defense was organizing itself as well. And. Uh, Chamberlain now getting a through ball to Oyo. The ball's the flags up for offside. 
Well, it looked like a beautiful ball floated onto the flanks there. They need to use that speed of Joshua Royo. Because again, unfortunately, when you have a, a player of Joshua Royo's caliber, just because of the runs, if you don't make good use of it, it might not last 90 minutes. You're right, and the timings of the of the passes must be right, uh, because uh, Oyo with that pace has, has given uh, Task a lot of problems, especially on that right-hand side. And uh, furthermore, Oyo has not scored a single goal in 2015. Well, that again... Uh, would uh, work both ways it would uh, make him work harder to try and put his name on the score charts as well so it's a motivator as much as it is a demoralizer good ball turned in uh, but just in front of the goalkeeper not coming close enough for Murage to try and make anything out of it oh you again uh, uh, gets the benefit of a foul from Humphrey Mieno and Humphrey Mieno is quickly learning to be a rugged player Gilbert he really is run, learning to scrape his way through the midfield. He needs to. I mean, Humphrey Meno, all, always, we've always thought that he's a lazy player, but uh, from the look of things, he's becoming a better player so far. This is Cargo getting himself into the box, trying to pass the ball out, but doesn't get it in time for Jesse Were. Omino pushes it slightly forward to Smith Ouko. Uh, then again, Humphrey Meno will pick it up to Cargo. Trying to get a change of wing. Oh, Muraga doesn't get to it. It's picked up on the left side by Osman Mundy. Well, Tusker FC taking total control of the few minutes that we played in this second half. And almost immobilizing the Chevrolet Sugar side. Another attempt to bring the ball onto the left side. The attempt is by Tatas Wamalwa. Doesn't quite work well. Although they still pick it up again. Moniki pushing it forward. Murage not controlling it. Or attempting to control it. Because off the field of play. It is going to be a throw in. It is going to be for Tasker FC. So now that we've got the chance, Gilbert, what do you expect in this second half? <laughs> <laughs> there is a change of tact. Uh, you've seen uh, Kevin Kimani drifting towards the inside. It means that uh, he's been asked to at least double up in numbers, especially when Tasker is pushing on ball. Jesse Ware being powered through, goalkeeper reacting properly and getting himself onto that ball ahead. The Tasker captain already has two goals to his credit. Second time in uh, two marches against uh, Chamberlain that he has caught two goals. Uh, and, uh, again, an attempt to send it onto the flanks. This is Mangi. Has not been very, very effective in the first half. But the Chevrolet Sugar side get a free kick. Uh, then uh, the ball control uh, lets him down as it goes off the field of play for a throw in. Well, it looks like it's going to be a foul then. Tusker in the fifth position. Three points would get them to 29. They will still leave them behind Olinzi in uh, their Premier League table standings. But of course, there's still uh, a lot of matches to be played before uh, the final tally would be added up. But yes, it's a second leg, and that's why the matches will get more competitive because you want all the three points from every of the match that uh, you have. You don't have another leg in which you can count to try and do things differently this is a foul it has been given to the Tusker FC side uh, Mike Morori still a very worried man seeing his side creating very good chances this one is offside and correct call by the assistant referee this time round uh, no Fuller was slightly ahead uh, by the time the ball was being played Mr. Onyango will send it forward. Murage will try to change its course. Mangi back to Murage. Uh, then a good attempt to power Mangi on that left flank. Now he gets a chance to cross the ball. Try to make it look like a shot as well. Better ball control in the midfield. Smith Ouko down on the left side to Joshua Oyo, who has already troubled a Tudor a bit. A Tudor gets in his way. It's called obstruction. And uh, this time he's been uh, spotted by the center referee.
going to be a free kick. Well, you himself will be taking it. So just about uh, six green jerseys in there. It's uh, not a very high one. Well, Fuller has a little touch to Jesse Wehre, but he's all alone up front. He'll have to wait for support. Pushes it just a little bit too far. And uh, now the support comes in from behind. Mieno with a big run down on the left side to a Fuller, who turns it onto his right foot. Uh, that's the proper touch we're talking about, Gilbert. Even if you're on the left flank, you turn the ball back on your right foot and cross it in. Well, that is his stronger foot, and any time that he has put the ball on his right foot, he has done some meaningful work for Tasca. Any time that he has used his left, uh, it has really, really let him down uh, at this particular point. <laughs> well, credit to him for that cross from the right foot. Uh, and then Tusker FC now will decide to dictate the pace in this game. It's a good thing at the moment if you are able to dictate the pace. They've, they have two goals uh, advantage at the moment, but they shouldn't sit back on it, should they? They have should... taken control of that midfield. They're hitting the balls very well and uh, using that right wing very, very effectively. Cargo crosses it in. The goalkeeper has committed himself. He has a touch on the ball, uh, but that commitment by Freddy Konyango can turn into a liability if he does that again. He did it once. Uh, uh, I was a little bit worried that Tonyango would not get onto this ball. It was too far to try and run for it. But I guess by now he's also worried about the defenses not, you know, marking everybody else who's approaching from that side. His timing has been very, very poor on numerous occasions. Uh, he has missed to collect the high balls and put Chemi in a very, very dangerous position, including the third goal that he conceded. He should have put his hands on that ball. It's going to be a free kick then for Tasker FC. And uh, Humphrey Mino and Lloyd were, and uh, a very hard shot that goes into the net. Uh, well taken by Joaquin Zatudo. He packs a power shot. Then. They looked like they were going to be organizing how it was going to be put in. But what a shot from Joaquin Zatudo. There is no stopping that one. It's a cracker of a shot. And it does exactly what a cracker of a shot is expected to do. Goes straight into the net from the littlest of touches. Goalkeeper totally unable to get onto it. Still ranks as one of the best shots so far. With Jesse Wehrer just getting out of its way. I think just confuses the goalkeeper a bit. <laughs> It doesn't matter how many times you look at it. That's a cracker of a shot, Gilbert. Well, he scored one against Goldman here. He scored another one against All Stars. He scored a scorcher against Chemilil. There's no doubt that this goes in as one of the best shots. And uh, at this particular point, Tasker leading Chemilil by four goals to one. Well, a scorcher uh, with by Gilbert Slemba's description would also just be a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it forces the Chamberlain Sugar side to make a substitution. Stephen Karaoke has been very silent. Uh, rather, Joseph Karaoke has been very silent in this game. Uh, he's been replaced by one of their latest inclusions, uh, Mohamed Mwachiponi, in the 60th minute of the game. Uh, Smith would still need to be very, very strong in that midfield. This is Jesse Wehre again. Going down on the on the right side, the interception will send the ball off the field of play. But uh, there's a little bit of uh, a collision uh, with uh, Smith Ouko, which is a little bit more painful to Smith than anybody else. Cargo controlled the ball and tried to release it, but there is Cargo stomping onto Smith Ouko's boot, <laughs> almost rendering him stationary. You know, when someone has got the weight on your foot and you try to get up, it becomes very difficult at that point. Uh, that has, uh, you know, caused a little bit of pain for... Uh... For uh, the Chevrolet Sugar Defender. It's back into the midfield. And uh, for Chablin Sugar. Here is Karani. And uh, then Alois Mangi. They've got someone on the right side. Oyo brings it in. 
headed out for a corner. It's going to be. So a corner then it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be for uh, the Chumlin Chicken side. Karani again floats it in, it's a high one. The goalkeeper decides to punch it back into play. Karani, who started it all, decides to veer back into the midfield. Scraps it through for Alois Bangi. who's a little bit slow in going into that area. Ball will go up for a throw in. Uh, it's going to be for uh, the Chamberlain Sugar side, but that's the corner that forces Musalia to punch it back into play. He didn't have the confidence to be able to pick it up firmly in his grasp. Well, Next game coming up for you, but they're United versus Gormahia. And there's no better symbol at the moment than that of the coach of Gormahia, Frank Natal. Uh, watching this very keenly and uh, knowing that he's got opponents coming up as well in uh, the near future. Uh, and he probably has got to get a good glimpse of what they are doing as well. That's another one that will be live for you in your World of Champions from the Nyayo National Stadium. I think we've got Jokins at Tudor on the ground. Injured from that turn as he tried to clear rough the ball. That's what has stopped play for a little while. Uh, he's going to be walked off the field of play. So that play can resume. And when it resumes, it's going to be a throw in for the Chumley Sugar side. Titus Mamalo is taking it. Harani sets himself up for a shot. But then he also doesn't execute a shot, but tries to drop it into the area. Oh, they take a little bit too long to try and take the shot, sir. It's a bit of delivery all the way back to uh, the defenders. Well, Trimble pick up position. Smith Oko plays it to Alois Mangi. Good ball control. Uh, Mwachi Pony with a good one down on the right side. Plays it back to Mangi, who's got a chance to shoot. Another attempt by Murage, but it's a half out of attempt. He takes a deflection as uh, no, Fuller gets to the end of uh, a long ball from the midfield. He's waiting for support now. Dancer Kago is approaching from behind him. It's taken to Kevin Kimani, who doesn't take a good shot. But a good idea by Noah Fuller to send the ball onto that side. Well, he's really trying, he's really been trying to find uh, Kevin Kimani in a prime position. And uh, Kimani has not been able to connect those balls properly. Uh, this is a drubbing. I mean, uh, the last time that they were hit four goals was the uh, uh, last two games where they lost against Gormaya, four goals to one. And at this particular point, the way things look like at this particular point, it's possible T Tasker might score more goals. Well, it's uh, Chamberlain will try to bring it back into the center. That will be a foul. It's a hybrid by Mesha Karani. No doubt about it. Well, tempers do flare in a game of football sometimes, but uh, um, you, you must think about it this way that they've been running, jumping, shooting for 65 minutes. They're bound to be a little bit. Um, impatient and uh, when there is the whistle and you think that you are going to be going towards goal then it becomes even worse Chumlin Shiga make a substitution and uh, Denison Kangi another striker who's got the qualities of scraping up front is coming into play as Murage who scored the goal for the Chumlin Shiga side going off the field of play now Daniel Murage will take a rest now Jokins are two and Mieno back to Atudo and to Eugene Sike. Oh, he's transferred to Tasker FC. Eugene Sike. Oh, drew in a lot of emotions originally because uh, he was disgruntled because the team had refused to release him. But later on, I think after a a little bit of arbitration, he found his way to the Tusker FC outfit. This is a good through ball to a fuller. 
He's got good speed, good anticipation, but he's got a power pack as well in terms of a shot. And that's not the place to use that power pack, is it, Gilbert? Well, I think in another game, that would have counted as, as a goal uh, if it was in a rugby game. I mean, he was all by himself in a prime position. He should have utilized that put Staska ahead five balls. But look at the way they're trying to penetrate that uh, Chemili rare gun. Well, it would have counted in a rugby game as a goal if it had gone through the two posts, <laughs> wouldn't it, Gilbert? <laughs> <laughs> but we don't... <laughs> Well, you've got to give credit to the young man. He's done well. This one's already gone off the field of play. And, uh, yeah. But Fuller just shouldn't have used too much energy in there. That's the only thing I think he should have uh, checked on. Well, it's a good thing for him at least to be the first, uh, the starting 11 for Tasca. And knowing very well that Tasca is uh, full of... Uh, either internationals or ex-international. I think at this particular point, out of the 11 players, there is none of these players that is not or has not played for the national team. Oh, this one's uh, back to Musalia from Eugene. And he goes off the field of play now. Going to be a throw-in. You talked about uh, the, the, the substitution of uh, Joseph Karaoke. Just wanted to remind you that Karaoke uh, comes from the relegated uh, Australian Football Club, and the man who came in uh, come from uh, that is uh, Mohamed Majiboni comes from another relegated side, <laughs> Congo United. <laughs> I fear to ask who was the coach at that time when those two teams were relegated. <laughs> Uh, it's one of those days that I don't want to confront my fears, so I'll give that. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, there's no taking credit about those two players playing in the Premier League side. Uh, just because they've uh, appeared on television as well. The two teams still got relegated. And what coach <laughs> was responsible at that time. <laughs> but that is a story for another day. <laughs> it's Tasco FC who pick up the ball again. Uh, and uh, Kevin Kibani tries to bring it back to the center. Omino has been looking so resigned in this second half. It's a little bit worrying. His body language would say something about, look, I can't give anything anymore. We are being outwitted here. But two times they didn't clear the balls going towards the goal. And once he was actually responsible, Mr. Omino. Good ball down to Karani from uh, Bangi. And uh, communication then uh, becoming a quality that they need at about this time. Musalia forced to put the ball back into play. One that disguises it, itself as a drop ball. Amino has missed to control, has missed to clear as well. Causes a little bit of difficulty for the defense. Kevin Kimani crosses the ball to Jesse Were, who puts it in the net. Calmly, confidently on his left foot. And it is official. But Jesse Were will pick up the match ball to go home with it after scoring three goals today and improving his goals tally to 13 from the 10 that he had. Take it over is the lead scorer in the Tosca Kenyan Premier League. And stiff competition that will be coming between him and the Gomaya young protege who is leading the score charts at the moment. But that's three goals in one match, same as what Michael Olunga did in one match. And uh, this is competition at its best. The defenders will be blamed here, Omino particularly, for not having cleared the ball in the midfield and resulting into that run. The goalkeeper, of course, can't do anything about this one if the defenders don't clear it. Well, they finish his masterpiece. I mean, he is very calm, Jesse, where he controls the ball in the six-yard box. Humbly slots it in for his starting goal and therefore goes up as a top, big top scorer at the moment. Well, one of the hugest scores uh, in the Kenya Premier League. Tusker FC 5 and Chamberlain Sugar 1. And we're just in the 71st minute of the game here. As uh, Chamberlain Sugar gets outwitted, not because they're not playing at the center, but it's just because the defense has not been up to speed and has not been uh, as good as uh, the other departments in the game. Wachiponi tries to get a through ball. 
doesn't choose who's going to be playing with that through ball, who's, who's going, who is going to be playing with in that through ball. Regina Sika to Cargo, a little touch gets it to Joaquin Zatudo, who now gets a chance that he usually loves so much to overlap on the right flank. He's scored a goal himself, can't afford to enjoy himself now. I think for Chamberlain Sugar at the moment, it will be about minimizing the damage, won't it, uh, Gilbert? But they really don't have anything to lose now, do they? That's the truth, uh, Bernard. We've said it, and I said it, that if they continue playing this way, we can see more goals coming. And we still have about uh, more than 15 minutes uh, to play for. I'm uh, seeing Tasker scoring another goal in the few minutes to come. If Chamberlain do not straighten up that defensive uh, display that has been very, very, very disgusting a bit. Again, it's uh, the Tusker FC side uh, that uh, picks it up. Now, Chamberlain now have a chance to go for a break, but it's, it will be three on three. They really need to know just how to run the ball. Karani brings it back to Mwachiponi, who manages to, well, tries to go through the midfield, but loses position. Jesse Vera scripts it back to Kevin Kimani and now Humphrey Mieno comes in to the assist. Lovely ball again through to Jesse Vera. A little dummy as if Wafula was going to get it. Then Wafula moves out of position and the through ball is directed to Jesse Vera. 13 goals in the Kenyan Premier League this season. The highest tally so far competing with Gorbai as youngster. And he could have changed this one here. Well, he has an opportunity. He will definitely have many more opportunities coming because at this particular point, Chamberlain have lost their head, they've lost their cool, they will definitely uh, create a lot of opportunities for Tasker to be able at least to go in through that central defense line because Omino, his, his body language shows you clearly that he has lost it. This is Mangi on the left side, gets it back to Karani. And then uh, trying to get a chance to go for a shot to you, totally outmatched in there by Lloyd Wahome. Ultimately, it is a uh, Picked up by Tusker FC with Cargo and Mieno now. They can't afford to enjoy themselves. Well, it's very bad. It's very, very bad and very, very disheartening, especially when you're you're losing five goals to zero and you are also being denied possession of the ball it makes you even look more tired and uh, disorganized at this particular point where Ruri doesn't really really know what is happening with him and he has lost touch with what is going on on that on, on, on that bench well it's not really issued any instructions as well but i i think um, the best thing to do would be to continue to play as if you are the ones who are leading here and try to uh, get get the goals because that's the only way you can then defend yourselves from attack They say the best way to attack is to defend uh, the best way to defend is to attack So that was should have been happening I think Joaquin Zatudo with a very optimistic thought in trying to get the better of the goalkeeper on the other side It doesn't work out. It goes out uh, And it's gonna be uh, Throwing has been taken by Chamberlain Sugar There's still have 15 minutes of play remaining. That's a lot of time in a game of football and if they don't if they don't commit themselves into playing here, but they will soak in another goal They will definitely soak in another goal. Task is enjoying possession. They're just knocking the ball around. They're not in a hurry They don't want to lose possession of the ball and when you have a team chasing the ball around It can really really be detrimental to your mindset Well back to the <laughs> A little bit of communication in there where Humphrey Mieno tends to feel that Omino is using the elbow a little bit and brings it to his attention. He should be bringing it to the referee's attention. Then back into the midfield. And a chase by Mangi. Uh, by Unkangi, rather. A veteran of the Kenyan Premier League. There is Unkangi. That's probably done as many years as Osman Mandi. And Eugenia Sika then represents the younger generation of players together with Jesse Wera as well making waves in uh, the Kenyan Premier League. Karani 
pushes it to Smith, who then leaves it out on the right, the left side for Amalwa. Karani again, and goes for a shot this time round. Just doesn't get it accurately, but at least gets a shot flying from his feet, uh, Gilbert. Well, he's really, really been trying. He's the only person who has really, alongside uh, Oyo, who have really been doing some meaningful uh, moves towards the Tasca defense line. Cargo. Easily outwitted by Kristen Muazo. Sends the ball off the field of play, but this man uh, acquired from Sofa Parker. And uh, the Sofa Parker factor oh. <laughs> is very, very strong in the Tusker FC lineup. Well, quite a number of them. Uh, uh, Situma has been there, Johnson Cargo, Humphrey Piano, Osborne Monday, Gina Sike. And the list is endless. <laughs> you know, the list doesn't end, Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> it ends just there, but there's also a few other players who've come from other teams. Now I've seen it, but you'd have to count as well. <laughs> and that includes Noah Fuller. There's uh, Dalla Juba as well. So uh, a lot of movement in the transfer period with everybody trying to get uh, the kind of players they need for it. You've got a player on the ground in the field. Even as uh, the task FC side make another substitution, bringing in another former FC Leopards player, Emmanuel Ngama. <laughs> He's going to be coming in now. And uh, Tasca would be needing to use a lethal striker up front to sharpen things up. There will be. Deciding to do that uh, with just about uh, 12 minutes of play remaining and uh, They will be benching who they thought was another little striker Again formerly of FC Leopards immediate formally in there in the mid uh, season transfer In which Ngama and uh, Noah Fula were acquired from the FC Leopards table So 78 minute substitution Gilbert, what do you make of it? Well, I think he's just trying to give uh, rest to uh, Noah Fuller, who has actually been uh, thrown in the flesh in the German defense line, and try to give at least uh, Gamma some opportunity to prove himself, uh, as you've said, immediate uh, player from uh, FC Leopards. On the cross coming in, and uh, sent off the field of play from the hard work of Eugenio Sike. Uh, this sends it out for a corner. Uh, I think Eugene knew very well who was behind him, Denison Kangi. They get a nice chance at a cross, it's brought into the area. Headed out, it's going to be a throw in. And it's going to be for uh, the uh, Chamberlain Sugar side. A spiritual attempt by Eugene Sikhe twice to deny the Chamberlain Sugar side a chance to go any further. This is Harani tries to carve it towards Gola. But slices it with a little bit too much energy. It comes on the outside. Well, the uh, task FC side make another substitution. And uh, Ugandan Ronald Musana, who immediately before the mid-season was playing for KCB, is brought into play. Uh, the Ugandan will be turning up for uh, task FC side. It replaces Dunstan Kago. So that's a. Three, uh, two strikers there in, in the game so far to couple up with uh, uh, Jesse Wehrer who's already scored three goals. Well, apart from just uh, trying to beef up that striking force, I think uh, uh, Tasca have realized that they have an opportunity to be able at least to score more goals. And that's the reason why they brought in uh, Osana on the right-hand side who has scored two goals for Madi and KCB. And also uh, they've tried to slot in uh, uh, Emmanuel Gama who has also scored two goals. Uh, at the box. Are they up to take it onto the left side? Situma. Oh, get it to Monday and then to Kevin Kimani. Oh, and Osman Monday again. Uh, powers Kevin Kimani forward. Uh, they know very well that they've got an Omino on speed. Uh, and they're not afraid to do that again, are they? Well, we saw it. We saw it on, on, uh, against Gorma here. Omino was beaten more than four times with Ogormaya uh, striking force. And this particular game, he has also been beaten four times uh, against a very reasonable task of forward line. So clearly, they are struggling centrally, and they are also struggling in their goalkeeping department.
The substitution on the other side is for uh, a man called Nelson Drani. Uh, Nelson Drani will be substituting uh, Alois Mangi. And uh, Drani will be getting a chance onto the very big stage for uh, the uh, for the uh, side. He joined from Border Lions in Busia for a very small sum of 15,000 Kenya shillings. Yeah, but <laughs> well, I think that is the, what we call develop, develop, development fee that uh, clubs uh, always get when they uh, get their league. Isn't it supposed to be 30,000 shillings? Uh, from the Premier League is 30,000, the other league is 15,000. From the lower league. Uh, Mangi tried to get onto that ball, cleared by uh, Humphrey Mieno. And then Karani well, picks it up in the outside. Well, you must remember that you have to touch the ball for the uh, whistle to go. So Karani was already offside. It's just that the whistle comes in when he touches the ball. If he had left it uh, and he wasn't interfering with play, well, there would have been no whistle. So the fans obviously will interpret it as a chance missed for the side. But with uh, just about seven minutes uh, of play remaining, Gilbert, what can you say about this game? Uh, Tasker have tormented Chamberlain in this one. <laughs> Chamberlain have really not had any answer against Tasker's outfit in the second half of this game. I think tactically they got it right in the first half. They were not able to utilize their chances. And Tasker has created five chances and scored five goals. So clearly, Tasker have come in a more re energized side than uh, the first half. Well, let's see what they do with the energy. They've already pumped in five. And uh, we still have time in the game. As uh, the throw is taken, and uh, this is Ronald Musana who's brought down. Going to get uh, a free kick for the Tusker FC side. He joined from the KCB side in 2015. The cross comes in, but it's a low one. And then uh, there will be a foul. Very unnecessarily on Drani Nelson by husband Monday who just makes sure and that's a yellow card offense in my opinion it was very deliberate and very very intended oh the referee just lets it fly but uh, what more can Chandler Sugar bring in against uh, the side on Kangi sends it onto the side uh, a foul out of the right side the advantage is already lost as well And so Eugene Asike is penalized for that push just because the advantage was lost. If the advantage was still on, there would be no need for the whistle there. It's going to be a free kick on the right side. From the right side for uh, the Chevrolet Sugar side. Just about five minutes in regular time remaining. Maybe two or more. Maybe two or less minutes uh, to be added to the game later on. Oh. Big feet of uh, Osbert Bande easily intercepting that free kick. All right, Chimlin playing it all the way back to Preston Moazo. Who tries to get on Kangi running. Smith Ouko tries to control it. It comes into the midfield again. Kimani and Humphrey Mieno in some of their favorite moves, but this one is intercepted. This is Oyo. Has it been much on the ball? Uh, in the second half, but it still troubles John Kinzatudo. Gina Sika intercepting it. Smith Ouko gets a chance to send it onto the right side. Uh, this one's to Karani again. Can he cross it on time? Well, he tries. Bangs a massively big one into the defender. <laughs> Sending him sprawling onto the ground. I tell you, at about this time as well, the players are a little bit tired, so any moment to get down a bit is good enough but oh Oiro may catch it in that place where you wouldn't want to catch anything else and uh, the sheer pain of it all you know he's got to put his hands to his back just so that he doesn't concede a penalty but when it gets to messing up with uh, some of the most valuable properties then you know how painful it is and Loiro may cannot be failed on that one. He's messing up with somebody's family. <laughs>
Gilbert. That's a very old way of putting it. <laughs> Some other people would say they hit the future. <laughs> well, let's leave that story for now. <laughs> the attempt to start the game from the right side with Ronald Musana, but then they've been intercepted by Mwachi Pony. This is Oyo now. Uh, it's waiting to see where the others are running to. This goes up for a throw in. It's going to be for uh, the uh, Chevel Chiga side, but not before they make a substitution. And uh, Dennis Nzomo. In the midfield. Will come into play for Kevin Kimani. Uh, I think Kevin Kimani has done his bit. Was looking a little bit faded now, but after giving a better performance for the side in the midfield. And Zomo now will be called upon to execute the same now. Because off the field, it's going to be a throw-in. You could say that Tusker FC, with the substitutions that they have made, they have decided still to be superior in midfield and have the acumen to strike up front. You're right, of course. And Zomo, uh, apart from just uh, having some playing time, has been brought in to try and solidify that midfield. They don't want to let it. You can see what is happening on that bench. Muiruri in a very offensive mode and that man right seated right next to him should be the other central defender Odera who is not on the team sheet today <laughs> One of their seasoned players probably being touted to be the next uh, assistant coach Well oh, Charles Odero, you're right. He is uh, he named as assistant coach on that side, but uh, he's usually playing in defense I think it's a good thing to graduate from uh, your playing career into the technical bench but uh, with this kind of uh, scoreline, then uh, questions start being asked. And unfortunately, the last, last question to be asked is whether we've got the right people on the technical bench. Uh, that's a difficult question for Muruli to answer at this time. But they pick up position. The youngster, Nelson Trani, managing to veer off onto the right flank and trying to set up his uh, captain. They need to get the ball off the field of play because they've got a player on the ground. Uh, it's uh, husband Monday. We rarely see him in that position. Uh, Humphrey Miano was uh, tackled off that ball there, but uh, Monday was actually in the way. And uh, he takes the brunt of all that. Uh, do you think Monday will remember this Sunday <laughs> when he was brought down? We rarely see him in that position. Well, if he doesn't wake up in that position, he will definitely remember this Sunday. Mother well, United versus Gormaya coming up immediately after this one. And the Gormaya fans who love to call themselves the Green Army, complete with a plug, are in the field. And they make themselves known to have arrived in a big way. A good number of them that are dancing to the frenzy of that beat. Osman Mandi has been stretched off the field of play. As uh, Ronald Musana will pick up the ball for uh, the Tusker FC side and uh, will wait for support. Binding it from uh, Dennis Zoma. We've played the 90th minute of the game and I think it's more than three minutes that will be added into this one. Well, four minutes then. Uh, we had more stoppage in this uh, second half than we did in the first half. And still, that's a lot of time in football. This will be a foul. It will be given to the Chevrolet Sugar side. Very deliberately done here by uh, Emmanuel Ndama. Unnecessarily as well. Uh, we've got uh, one of the Chevrolet Sugar players as well, Jeff Samino on the ground. Oh, no, I think it's, it's not Jeff Samino, but it is. Uh, uh, Mohamed Machiponi in Jersey 15. They really need to, uh, well, they need Machiponi at the moment as one of the freshest legs. They've made only sub two substitutions, the Chamberlain Chiga side. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that uh, we've noticed as well in the Chamberlain Chiga side. They haven't had uh, the doctor as busy as we usually do see him on the field. For the Task FC side, yellow and black would be the preferred color. And Bobbitt, yellow tie, a uh, uh, black tie as well. <laughs> And uh, even as uh, the Chevrolet Sugar get the chance to bring the ball back, they know that they're doing it while Tusca have a huge advantage. The cross is not a very good one delivered by the captain. Uh, 
And, uh, it's uh, going off the field of play. Well, I think Nelson Drani came into play as well, so the uh, Channel and Sugar side have already ex uh, exhausted their substitutions. And um, whether or not now they can be able to salvage the damage is the big question. Well, look at that. Pulling an armstring, I think. And uh, just not going for the ball. It's one of the worst things to happen to a player. At what point, he totally unable to move. Uh, I don't think he'll be coming back into the field of play. He controlled the ball and decided to take off. And just there, something gave in. Uh, they often say that uh, when things happen like that, they're usually more serious uh, injuries than if they happen on impact. And, uh, the doctor now gets a little bit busy. Are you? Abeid is a doctor on the challenge side. Usually a very busy man on weekends, especially when Chelsea is playing. Today is an off day. It's only dealing with one case of much more uh, now. You're right. I think there's been very few injuries uh, on, on the Chelsea side. I mean, uh, it shows you that the physical levels are uh, up there. The only problem now is they've already utilized all their substitutions, and therefore, if Mochipoli should Mochipoli not come back, then they will have to make do with ten players. A uh, chance for a cross from the right side. Uh, playing one man less. They only need to give 110%. Or oh, Yo picks it up. Uh, decides to try and waylay the goalkeeper. Not from that angle, not in that speed. He's quite in a hurry. And that doesn't work out for him. We're playing the final minute of the added time. Jesse Wera with three goals will obviously take the match ball home. Uh, one of those unwritten rules in the game of soccer. But you score a hat trick, you take the ball home. Gamma pushes it to Humphrey Miena with a chance to change the scoreline and a hard shot that knocks off the defender from his feet. Eugenio Sike committing himself and sending the ball onto the left flank, but uh, that's offside on Jesse Wehre. Nothing much can the Chamberlain Sugar do at this time. They can't score four goals in less than two seconds. Uh, offside flag will be up as well. I think that's the last move that Chamberlain Sugar will have had in this one. Any moment now. And the eyes on the referee. The game will come to an end. And it's been brought to an end by Moses Osano. In favor of the Task Grafsi side. A massive demolition of the Chamberlain Sugar side. Three goals from this man, Jesse Wede. Bringing him back to the top of the score chart in the Kenyan Premier League as a lead scorer. Now with 13 goals, James Tuma doing his duty as well. And Amino acknowledging the fact that things were very difficult today and saying they've been outplayed in this one. Of course, they're friends, they know each other very well. And uh, at the end of it all, it's a game on the best team. Is the one that is always being wished the best to win. They've won it now, the touch crash side. Five goals to one. Three from Jesse Wehre in the first, in the fifth, in the fifth and in the 70th minute of the game. And Daniel Murage with a salvaging goal in the 33rd minute. To confirm the scoreline there now. From the Nyaya National Stadium, it's full time. Tusker FC 5 and Chamberlain Sugar 1 in round 18 of the Tusker Kenyan Premier League. How about that? Jesse Were taking control of this particular one, scoring three. It is a hat trick for Jesse Were, the first one he scored in 2015, and now has just surpassed Michael Olunga on the top scorers chart. And that is by one. Michael Olunga, of course, with 12. He was two ahead before this game. They, of course, have a chance, along with his Gormahia teammates, to improve on that one and catch up with Jesse Were as Gormahia is up next. But those goals from Atudo, Lloyd Wahome, and Jesse Were are come at the expense of at least a 